And so I am proud to announce that Alberta's government is banning the police practice of carding immediately and creating new rules on the use of street checks. And I am especially happy to be doing this today, just over four years after a fantastic MLA from Calgary West, Mike Ellis, raised this matter in question period to then NDP Justice Minister Kathleen Ganley. Municipal government set their own budget, but I am also responsible for a large amount of grant that we give them to help with core police services. And I think I have been clear that I am prepared to ensure that that particular money goes straight to police services and not to municipal council if they have chosen to legitimize the radical left who are calling for us to defund the police. Alberta's conservative government under the direction of Alberta's and in fact all of Canada's first black Justice Minister and Solicitor General Casey Madhu is outlawing the police practice of carding and at the same time bringing in firmer rules around the remaining police practice of street checks. Now, I've used these two terms interchangeably and I shouldn't because street checks occur when police stop and question people for investigative purposes. Police have to have a reason to stop you. And there are new protocols coming as well as reviews and new accountability measures coming to make sure that police are using street checks properly and not abusing them. Now, carding is a violation of your charter rights as it is defined here in Alberta. It was completely arbitrary. There were no reasons necessary for the police to stop you, question you, and take down your information. That's no more here in Alberta. It ended Thursday. Police chiefs are on board with these changes. Community activists are on board with these changes. Indigenous representatives are saying it's a step in the right direction towards reconciliation. The left-wing media, though, they are not as on board. Why? My guess is because it's a conservative making the changes here. Now, after Thursday's historic press conference in Edmonton, I caught up with Justice Minister Casey Madhu as he walked from his office to the legislature building and I asked him about the difference between carding and street checks. I asked him why the NDP didn't do anything to make these changes sooner, even though it's been on their radar for years. And I asked Madhu what he thinks about the movement to defund the police, since he's the man in charge of policing here in Alberta. Check it out. So today you announced a change to the Police Act to end carding, but still keep uh, street checks. Can you describe the tangible difference between the two? Because I think people use the two of them interchangeably. So uh, thank you, Sheila. The, the difference is that carden is an arbitrary uh, demand of information from citizens on the basis of race, ethnicity, and skin color, and things like that. And I think we can all agree that that is a gross violation of our constitutional uh, right. Street checks, on the other hand, are a legitimate law enforcement tool to ensure that they continue to investigate crimes, you know, um, get to disrupt crimes before they are committed, and keep an eye on criminal behaviors that create all kinds of problems in our society. What I have done today is to, is to put guidelines around the practice of street checks so that there are no mistake that it is completely different from carding. Now, this is something that UCP MLA Mike Ellis proposed uh, nearly five years ago. Uh, at the time, NDP Justice Minister Kathleen Galley, she didn't do anything. What are you hearing from the NDP now? You know, you know, you know Sheila, the blunt truth is that the NDP didn't do anything, but they ridiculed uh, Mike Ellis in the legislature to the point where the then Minister of Justice had to question where Mike Ellis got his law degree from. And this is what I have always said about the NDP. They are all about talk and no action. They don't mean any of these things. For them, electoral success is all that matters. They don't give a damn about the minority issues. And, and, I, and I am glad, quite frankly, Sheila, that I am at the political scene at this point in time to make sure that people from the communities like my own understand 
that we need real people, people who have good intentions in our politics to tackle many of the problems that we face and not the NDP. Now, one of the other things on your radar right now is this move, I think, in North America to defund the police. Calgary has decided to strip $20 million out of their police budget. Um, you've said it's been motivated by activists and socialists who don't understand the meaning of the rule of law. How do you know that? Are you hearing that from Calgarians? There is no question in my mind that, that you will not find a balanced citizen who would want to pick on the men and women who do so much to keep us and our community safe. At this point in time in our history, we need more resources to strengthen law enforcement, not take away resources from them. That is what is needed. And the idea that anyone out there will call for defunding the police, when we need more money to law enforcement, there's no better way to describe them other than radical activists. And, and I think that so many people out there will agree that it is not helpful for any elected politician whether at the provincial level or at the municipal level or at the federal level to be talking about defunding the police at this point in time. We must all be united in defending a great institution that keeps us safe whilst at the same time walking through the complaint that we have heard from communities. Now, what are you willing to do as Justice Minister to make sure that Calgary's police, but I guess police in municipalities all across the province who are could be subject to defunding. What are you willing to do as the Justice Minister to make sure that doesn't happen? You know, Sheila, the municipal government set their own budget. But I am also responsible for a large amount of grant that we give them to help with core police services. And I think I have been clear that I am prepared to ensure that that particular money goes straight to police services and not to municipal council if they have chosen to legitimize the radical left who are calling for us to defund the police. It's great to be at the legislature working and questioning our politicians, asking them questions that normal people want answers to, but it was not always this way. First, we had to fight Rachel Notley's previous NDP government for access to the legislature, and then we had to fight other journalists for our rights when our competitors banned us in a secret witch trial earlier this year, but the Speaker of the House intervened to defend freedom of the press, and we are going to make sure we use that freedom to bring you the other side of the story. Like how a conservative government made sure the police cannot detain you for no reason whatsoever. And that's an important right to be protected in these days of coronavirus fines and tattletales because you had a Christmas party. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. At Rebel News, our competitors don't seem to think that press freedom applies to us. So we have to fight for our rights every single day. It's expensive, it's time consuming, but we think it's so important that Canadians have a strong independent media in this country, one that isn't bought and paid for by Justin Trudeau. If you can donate to help us continue our fight for journalistic freedom, please go to letusreport.com.